Dana Abercrombie, The Coalition. Thank you both for joining me. My first question is from McCole. I hope I pronounced that right. Um, what is really interesting about this season is Lucy states that it's hard to do everything for everyone at the same time. And so I want to know, what does Lucy want, not just from Charles, but especially from herself? Um, I think the biggest thing for Lucille um, this season is she's learning to honor herself and love herself. Like she's, you know, been the matriarch of the family and really supporting everyone else. And now her voice um, starts to come more forward in, in this season. Okay. Now for you, Mr. Rook. Oh, sorry. Did I cut you off? No, nope. no, no, not at oh, all. Okay. I like your hat though. Thank you. Like you can go for a bike ride. Hey now. <laughs> now for Mr. <laughs> Russell, um, Charles, I believe, operates from a genuine place of love. However, that love seems to be a sense of control. And especially when it comes to that new business that he's starting with his son. His son's trying to teach him a new way. And he's like, nope, this is the old way. What do you feel Charles has to truly let go of in order for not this business to also be successful, but for his marriage and for happiness to thrive? Well, I think first, uh, uh, Charles has to realize that he, in his life, that he's losing control of himself and he's losing control of his family. I think what Charles wants most of all is agency that he hasn't had. I think that when you're when you're struggling to pay bills, when you're struggling to make money, when you're struggling to make a way, you you do lose a sense of yourself. You lose a sense of power, a sense of control, and a sense of agency. And so now, because he's these two boys that he's raised are now becoming the de facto men of the family, right? So then therefore he has no more control and no more agency. So he's trying to do that from the last possible way he can, which is just by literally fatherhood and husbandry and saying that, and, and so that's why he constantly leans on the, the whole idea of, I'm the father, I'm in charge, I'm the man of the house, but it's it's empty, it's hollow. And I think he's having a hard time dealing with that internally and so the, because of that it's it's gonna it manifests itself in in these different ways because he has to go somewhere to find that agency he has to go somewhere to gain that respect that he feels he hasn't he's lost or doesn't have or never had do you both feel that this season both lucy and charles have kind of lost the sense of listening to each other Hmm. That's a good question. I, I do think we, we miss each other. We, you know, I, 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 yeah, I think we miss each other. Yes, I, I would agree. We do miss each other. And again, just harkening back to um, what money does and what money affords you. Um, hmm. Money affords you the luxury of time. Lug money affords you the luxury to sit still and think. And I think that because they're in the pursuit of, because money's always been in lack, they've lost that time to be with each other. Again, that time to just sit and look at each other and speak softness because they're constantly moving. And, uh, you know, I think that's what's, that's why they're beginning to, we're beginning to see sort of uh, cracks in their relationship and in their communication. And would you say that their ego is kind of tied up into their morality as to why they won't accept their son's help in terms with the money and the finances and just regular basic things around the house? A hundred percent. You know, I think Charles more so than Lucille possibly, but um, but did, did you see, Charles's ego is definitely caught up in it. I mean, again, as I said, he's a he's a man and. A man is supposed to provide for his family, not his wife, to a certain extent, and not his children, definitely. Um, and so his ego was saying, but it, again, his ego is, it, 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 there's, there's cracks at the foundation and it's, and it's beginning to falter be to the point where he has no ego. You know what I mean? Because he has nothing to undergird him anymore. Now, for um, what I wanted to know with Lucy is the idea, the religion is really what holding her together. And so with that, do you feel that sometimes that that can be what's separating 
everyone in the marriage and also with her being the mother that she wants to be is because the Bible or it says act this way, especially when it comes to Playboy magazines, that scene, um, is that kind of hindering what could be a, a fruitful, more expressive, communicative marriage? Um, I, I, that part, I don't necessarily think is the Bible. I think that that might be part of it, but, but I think just um, at that time, you know, just feeling like he's might be interested in someone else, you know, even if it's Playboy other than me, says, um, it says there's a problem or something, something wrong or something he's missing to Lucille, I, I, I think, as opposed to it's just not, you know, godly. I think, I think that that is a part of it, but also, you know, just feeling like um, I'm not as, what, what's making him more interested in these things now, whereas he wasn't interested in these things as far as I could see before, you know? And, um, and I wasn't invited into that thing, you know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, I'm gonna stop talking before I give too much away. <laughs> <laughs> during, during any time during the reading of the script, did you both feel that this marriage was gonna just completely fall apart? Or is there still love and room there for them to come back together? I, I think there's always, I, I, I think the love that's between them, and this is really based on my, my um, communication with the real Miss Lucille, I think their love is really strong. And, um, but yeah, it's circumstances, you know, that have caused them, it's, you know, the, the, the financial struggle has really gotten in the way of, of everything. So it's like this kind of desperation just to live and get by every day where, you know, we kind of lost, you know, these other things. And, um, and that's that's unfortunate, but I, I do think that their love um, is always there. Also for you, Russell, despite the disagreements that Charles may have with Terry, what do you feel that he can actually learn from him? Well, you know, it's, well, Charles would say nothing. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like Charles would say, you're supposed to be learning from from me. I, I think that, um, but but if I were to put the Russell hat onto Charles, uh, I I would say that you know, um, as what happens with a lot of elder states people, you know, in life is that we have to learn to adapt. Uh, we have to learn to pivot. If one door closes, another door does open. If it doesn't open, you have to go find the door and open that mother jumper. You know what I mean? And I think that what uh, what Terry and me being young, being entrepreneurial, being business minded is they've they found a way to say these doors are closed. Let us find another door to open. Not let's look for another open door. Let's find a door to open. And I think that if Charles were really to take a moment to listen and to pay attention to what his boys are doing, he'd have the willingness to really go find another way and be open to other opportunities. I mean, even in, even in the car business, it's, it's another opportunity, but he's not, oh, he's not fully open to the depth and breadth of what they could do and how they could really expand the business and really make it thrive. He still wants to do it in his narrow vision and his way of what he thought would work or what he thinks would work and not really to expand his mind. Right. And also kind of wondering, with, we're dealing with 1980s, we're in Detroit, and there's the fires that are happening weekly. Uh, we do see a scene where you're trying to protect the city and especially your neighborhood from not burning down. Um, with everything that's happening in the second season, what do you think that both Charles and Lucy kind of holds on to the most? What, what side of hope is that? Um. What side of hope do they hold on to as yeah, far what do you as? Hold, as far as you, the neighborhood is burning down, the marriage is falling apart, um, you, there's no control kind of what's going on in the household. What do you hold on to? What does the characters hold on to? I, I, I mean, I, I, I think they're trying to figure that out. You know, yeah. like what, what, what do you hold up to? And what is there? So it's, it's you know, things are just kind of, changing rapidly and we're trying to figure that thing out you know and 
you know, it's just not the same as it used to be. And, and I think what we've always held on to was family and love. And I think that still is, is a, is a huge factor, but it's, it's different because, you know, I, I think there's just so much desperation now on a certain level, just to live and get by and hold on. It's just, it's just hard. And, um, uh, sometimes you don't know what to hold on to. So, yeah, I don't think I don't think they have anything to hold. On. I think I mean, especially for Charles, I think that you know that's why you do certain things. That's why you look to a uh, a Playboy magazine or your eye, you avert your eye to look over somewhere else because you're really saying to yourself, there is no other alternative. So I I have to now find one. There is no hope. So I have to look for a better, a different way to uh, soothe my soul. Do you know what I mean? I think, and it, it's always most darkest before the law, before the light. And I think they're both in a dark period in their lives and in their marriage. And you just have to kind of allow these moments to play out and, you know, let what, what, what will be, will be. Um, you, you know, you hope that there will be light at the end of the tunnel, but I think for Charles, at least, he's in a, a very dark period in his life. Thank you so much for speaking with me. I truly enjoyed the second season of What I Seen. So thank you.